Hello there, wonderful people of God, people who are conscious of the fact that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Hence the need for us on earth to keep preparing ourselves as we await the return of Jesus to take his own to the place that he has prepared for them. Yes, that's why he tells us in John 14 verse 2 to 6 that he has gone to prepare a place for us in his father's house and that in his father's house there are many mansions, there are many rooms, meaning that every prepared person has a place in his father's house. Hallelujah. Warm welcome to your Gospel Encouragement Program, Meaningful Few Minutes with Mommy Reads, where we use biblical tidbits to encourage ourselves and miss daily discouragement. Happy Ascension Day. We hope that the day has been celebrated with a renewed impact and revelation of the importance of Christ's ascension on the church, the body of Christ as a whole. We heartily appreciate everyone who is making an effort to like, to comment, to share, and to subscribe. We pray that as you continue to do so, may God richly bless you in Jesus' name. If you are yet to subscribe to this YouTube channel, Bobby Reads Biblical TV, please make an effort to subscribe and to share. May the Lord bless you as you do so. My brother, my sister, if Christ is not your Lord and Savior of your life, quit living a life of sin. Give your life to Christ now that you still have the opportunity to do so. And if you once gave your life to Christ, but took it back for one reason or the other, now is the right time to give back that life to Christ before it becomes too late. And if Christ is actually Lord and Savior of your life, live a life that will attract others to Christ and not repel them from Christ. We pray for ways and directions to keep getting the gospel across so that that brother and that sister can come to the saving knowledge of Christ like yourself and myself. May God continue to equip and empower us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. By the special grace of God, during our last broadcast, we were live on Facebook and live on YouTube. We told ourselves that it is important for us to do the needful so that we can receive that which God has destined for us. We reminded ourselves of the fact that God uses unconventional means to bless us, hence the need for us to be kind to all and sundry. We also told ourselves that we should make an effort to prepare ourselves and also use the talents that God has put on the inside of us. May God help us to practice what we preach in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Today in Slos 350, we have a topic, Keep Preparing Yourself. Yes, and our main passage is Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 to 11. Mindful of the fact that we are celebrating Christ's ascension today, it is important for us to go back and look at some of the things, the lessons, the significance, the role, the importance that ascension has to us as individuals. You realize that in this portion of scripture, the first thing is that Jesus is giving his last words. He has instructed his disciples 40 days after his resurrection. He has taught them again. He has even cooked for them. Jesus had to grill fish for his disciples to show us how much of a compassionate leader he was. You realize that that is what he's doing even today. He is still leading his flock with compassion and not compulsion. And that is why he wants us to be prepared in a way that is pleasant in his sight. You realize that Jesus' last words to his disciples, to the apostles, to you and I, is the fact that the Holy Spirit will come and we will be empowered when the Holy Spirit comes. When the Holy Spirit eventually came on the day of Pentecost, you realize that it was to empower us, to give us the ability to walk right before God, to give us the opportunity to be imparted from above, to be empowered from above. And then after that, we will be able to make impact. We will be able to work well for the kingdom of God. You realize that when the disciples are told to tarry in Jerusalem, it is not for the fun of it. It is because if the Holy Spirit does not empower you and I, there will be no impactation and of course there will be no impact. And that is why you look at what is happening around us today. You realize that there is so much noise, there is so much matters, but there is very minimal impact. And that is because most of us are not walking right before God. That's because most of us are not walking well before God. And we can only walk right and walk well when we have been impacted by the Holy Spirit in order to impact 
the people around us. And so it is often said that the last words of a dying man should be taken seriously. Now, Jesus is not dying. He's ascending. He's living for a period of time. And so we need to take his words seriously. We need to consider them carefully. He tells us to wait until we are empowered by the Holy Spirit before we go ahead to do that which he wants us to do. How much time do we spend in the presence of God? In the place of prayer? In the place of Bible meditation? How much quiet time do we have? How much fellowship do we have with the Holy Spirit before we actually go out there and begin to do the things that he has called us to do? If we don't spend time communing, fellowshipping, dialoguing with the Holy Spirit, we might just go out there as noisemakers. We might just go out there as the seven sons of Sceva. It is important for us not to go out because others have gone. It is imperative for us to wait until we have been impacted or in, in, empowered to go out there to do the things that will cause impact in our lives and in the lives of those around us. You realize that another thing that Jesus makes us to understand is the fact that <laughs> he goes to prepare a place for us. As we earlier said in John chapter 14 from verse 2 to 6, Jesus is not joking in heaven. Jesus is not relaxing in heaven. He has gone to prepare a place for his own as the good shepherd that he is. In addition to interceding for us alongside the Holy Spirit, Jesus is preparing a place for you and I, which means that for us to access that place that he is preparing for us, we have to be preparing ourselves. That's why the Bible has made us to understand that we need to occupy in Luke chapter 19 verse 13, that we need to occupy till he comes. Most of us have become discouraged. Most of us have become tired. Most of us are looking for alternatives. We are looking for shortcuts. We have become, you know, comfortable with every kind of thing that looks successful. We have forgotten that that it looks successful does not necessarily mean that it is of God. Most of us are carried away. We were prepared in the beginning, but a lot the line it looks as if Jesus has delayed it looks as if Jesus has taken so much time and so we have gotten ourselves out of the place of preparation and we are now conforming and condoning the things that we are not supposed to conform to or condone at all child of God Jesus is still preparing heaven he is still preparing the rooms in heaven he is still preparing the mansions in heaven for those who are busy preparing themselves while they are on planet earth and of course there's no other way to prepare ourselves except we focus on the jesus who has ascended and that is why you realize that in the portion of scripture that is our main passage of scripture for today the disciples are looking intensely at jesus they are looking they are focused on jesus why they want to get to know him more they want to understand him better they want to get a better revelation of him. They want to fellowship with him. They want to have an encounter with him. And that's why Apostle Paul is telling us in Galatians chapter 4, verse 19 to 20, that he travails, he labors till the image of Christ is fully formed in us. We cannot prepare ourselves if we remove our eyes from the one who has gone to prepare a place for us. And as we focus or as we fix our gaze on Jesus, he will teach us certain things that we ought to know. He will refine our character. He will refine our entourage. He will fine tune our mindset, our perception, our actions, our reactions, and our interactions. Beloved in the Lord, what are some of the things that are preventing us from focusing on Jesus? Is it the challenges? Is it the difficulties? Is it the delay? Is it the this and the that that is making us to remove our eyes from the person who has gone to prepare a place for us? It is time for us to get back to the drawing board. It is time for us to go back to the foot of the cross. It is time for us to go back to the place where we will have directives, where we will have instructions, where we will get, get the roadmap, the GPS, the user manual from the one who is the way, the truth and the life, beloved in the Lord. Jesus is ascending to heaven before everybody. He's not doing it in secrecy because we know that sin thrives in secrecy. But righteousness is exposed. He does not ascend in the eyes of a few people. He ascends for everybody to see him so that there will be no confusion. Our God is not the author of confusion. So that we will not be forced to depend on other people 
we will be confident enough in what we have seen and we will have no choice but to depend only on what we saw and what we heard. Beloved in the Lord, let no brother and sister of God, no man of God, no woman of God, no relative of God make us to think otherwise. The Jesus who ascended for everybody to see is the same Jesus who will descend at some point in time. And so we should not be derailed, we should not be misled, we should not be cajoled into believing something that is not biblical. Jesus is the only one who ascended and has promised to descend to take his own. And now you realize that in the world in which we live in, there are some heresies, there are some people who are saying, ah, it's been a long time, it's more than 2,000 years ago, since that they said that Jesus would descend, and he has not descended. And so it is derailing many people, it is distracting many people. But we need to understand that the times and seasons are not known by us, they are known by God. It is not for us to ache our heads about those things, because the sacred things belong to God. And that which is revealed belongs to man. It is not about the specific time that Jesus will return that we should be concerned about. What we should be concerned about is the fact that he has ascended. Is the fact that he has told us that he has gone to prepare a place for us. Is the fact that he has told us that he will return to take his own with him. Doesn't the Bible tell us in Revelation 16 verse 15 that Jesus will come like a thief in the night? Nobody knows the specific hour, the specific time that the thief will come. But it is important for us to lock the doors of our lives, to guard ourselves, to make sure that we stay in check, we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, so that we will not find ourselves opening the door to things that we should actually be shutting the door to. The Bible says, blessed are those whose garments are clean. Blessed are those whose garments are unstained. What are the things that are trying to stain our garments? The Bible says that Satan came to tempt Jesus and found nothing of his in him. If we are followers of Christ, it means we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we will be able to live a life that will not give Satan access, that will cause Satan to come but not find anything of his in us as was the case with, his, with our master. Some of us, the life that we are living is giving Satan not just legal ground, but is giving him a pride of place because of the life that we live. The anger, the bitterness, the jealousy, the pride, the rage, the love of money, the immorality, the this and the that. Those are the things that are writing an open invitation for the enemy to come into our lives and to take full control. Because when he sees something that is his in, in our lives, he will be able to feel free. He will be able to relax in our lives. Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. And so because we do not know when he will come specifically, it is important for us to keep preparing ourselves until the day that he returns or until the day that he calls us home. It is important for us to also remember <laughs> that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people, meaning that there is a place, a prepared place for unprepared people. It is not everybody who will make heaven. But we have the choice while we are alive to choose between life and death. And Jesus gives us the advice to choose life through the mouth of Joshua. But we realize that for those who refuse to choose life, for those who refuse to prepare themselves to follow Jesus to heaven, of course they will miss heaven, but they will not miss hell. Hell is that prepared place for unprepared people. There's no middle ground. If we miss heaven, there's no way that we are going to miss hell. That's why the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 14 that hell is expanding itself, ready to receive all those who are unprepared to follow Jesus to the place that he has prepared for his own. Beloved in the Lord, it is while we are alive that we have the opportunity to, to choose right and to prepare ourselves to get to the prepared place for prepared people. May God help us not to live a life of unpreparedness so that we don't end up in hell. Even as we celebrate Christ's ascension today, it's important for us to remember that he is busy preparing a place for us. So we on earth should be busy preparing ourselves to get to the place that he has prepared for us. And that explains why if Christ is not your Lord and Savior of your life, just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Wash me with the blood of the Lamb. Give me the power to live right and to hate sin. Behold, you'll be getting it right before it becomes too late. Beloved in the Lord, 
Now is the right time to make the right choices because for every choice, there is a consequence. May God give us the grace to choose right and be prepared to make heaven when Jesus returns or when he calls us home in death. Remember that the Bible is the road, Jesus the code, sin the obstacle and heaven the destination. Shalom, good people of God.